you all. So I'm in the clinic today doing my, well, I'm shocking because I had some water tests that did not pass. So I'm going to shock. And I was looking up the dilution for the bleach and look at all the helpful information that ProEdge has. So, um, you know, I'm not going to be uh, opening for two weeks. So actually my lines are, have been purged and I still will purge and then look one week prior to opening at least three days prior to opening like amazing pro edge is great check them out okay so i'm going to shock the water lines with the bleach water solution or diluted bleach this i printed off from pro edge dental.com also brought all of my bottles to my sterilization area and I'm gonna wear my protective stuff and my eyewear. I'm gonna wear my utility gloves and make sure that I don't get bleach on me. Okay, so I brought my two water bottles into the room and I'm gonna start with my high speed, slow speeds, and my air water that's on the one of these delivery units. And you can even hear my other one hissing over there because I'll go put that water bottle on and then I'm gonna run it through until I smell bleach. I'm not putting this into my suction lines. Um, I'm gonna do it into the sink because bleach in my suction would not be good because I have an amalgam separator and it, the bleach mixes with the amalgam separator and if there's mercury in there, there's this probably a, an issue that I don't apparently want to happen in my office. Um, so I'm gonna do that and let's get started. Woof. Okay, so I have now shocked all of my units. Again, I have four rooms, two units in each room, and I have shocked that with the diluted bleach solution that I printed off from Pro Edge. This is going to now go into my uh, standard operating procedure folder for waterline testing. I'm with my maintenance log, so I'll document that I shocked everything today. I do have a few questions for Pro Edge, so I'm gonna document that phone call. I know you're shocked that I had questions, but I just little things like, um, I think I could have made a big batch of bleach water and just done a little bit. I think I put too much in each line um, because then I ended up dumping a lot of it out. And also, um, can, should I use distilled water to flush the lines or is it okay to use the regular water? Um, so I went ahead and purged my lines again because we are in our shutdown currently. That's why I, I'm documenting this. 
series um, is during the shutdown and quite honestly I don't think we're going to be opening up anytime soon and so on Pro Edge's website they have a COVID kind of kit to help guide us to like what we should be doing and it says if you're like more than two weeks out then you should purge your lines and so I was shocking mine because I did fail a few of them and I have time so I went ahead and shocked them but I will purge them again I'm pretty sure I'm going to test again and it does say to like one to three days before you're actually getting back to patient care that you should test your water line. So I still have some of my uh, quick passes. I just bent the box because I dropped it, but I still have some of these quick passes. You can go back and watch uh, when I did that water line testing with these guys. And then I'm going to do my blue tabs when I open back up after I, when I'm ready to start seeing patient care. Um, but right now we're just redirecting everybody to a different facility. So this one will be shut down. So I want to keep those lines purged. But so now my uh, quick pass test is going to go in my standard operating procedures for water line maintenance as well as this and then uh, my maintenance log will be there as well because I want to make sure that we document every time we're testing the water and what our results are because I have that information here and then we're going to set a schedule and this one's really good because it'll tell you like um, those little details um, some of the things that I had a hard time with, one was I, <laughs> learning my units. One of them uh, wasn't working. It was my very first line that I went to and uh, apparently just needed to repressurize uh, and it took a lot longer than the other lines. So now, um, so I had to come back to that, but I thought it was broken. So then it, it kind of slowed me down. So I was thinking like if I was actually doing this for patient care, like I would need extra time in the morning because you can shock these because it's only 10 minutes with the bleach water solution so you can shock it like before patients come in flush the lines put the blue tabs in and get going but if you're gonna have any equipment that's being fussy you obviously need a little bit more time so it's it's really great to have an ICC that has the time designated on their schedule that you have to set aside and on the the schedule is where we're putting it like when we test it when's the next time we need to test it so we can keep track of that and make sure that we have enough time and so then I ended up starting one room and because it's 10 minutes that it's going to sit in the line so i started one room set my timer on my phone which i'm recording on there i'd show you but i'd set 10 minutes timer was amazing to have on your phone because it's like me with baking the moment i start baking then i forget and then i burn all the brownies so i went from that room flushed it just enough to get the water going through went to the next room and kind of went there and then by the time that I made it to my fourth room my first room timer was going off so I went and flushed those lines again I used my timer again on my phone because I was doing it between one to three minutes and so I flushed that and by the th it just worked out like that but at first when I was fussing with that one line it did kind of um, it was a little bit of a hiccup so um, I, I was afraid I was going to hit that 15 minute uh, mark because you don't want to leave the bleach in the water lines more than 15 minutes but overall once I have a routine and we have a rhythm and we have a standard operating procedure this is gonna be nothing this conference will now be recorded so yes. when I made well one of the things that I learned is that I had bleach in my clinic but I swear I've looked at this bottle of bleach upside down, inside out, backwards, forwards, and there's not a percentage of sodium hypochlorite on it. Yep. Is it's that something that, people complain about? Yeah, I've noticed it too. Like I'll try to be, I'll look for it. And I'm like, am I just what missing it? It's just not listed. And so I just assume that it's going to be the lower concentration. So I kind of like did some research. I even called Clorox. And so most of the time, if it's not listed on there, it's going to be the either the 5.25 or the 6% mm -hmm. um, of so sodium hypochlorite. So a 1 to 10 ratio is what we, we recommend. If it's the 8.25%, you'll usually see it on on the container, on the actual outside. Of it. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. I grabbed all of my bottles because I had okay. eight total and I filled them up in the sterilization area. And because I was using my utility gloves and my eyewear and all the stuff, yes. but yes. 
I then I filled up my water bottles and I was like, I actually don't know how much bleach I should put into these water bottles. <laughs> what I like to tell people, because a lot of people or a lot of offices, they won't have like an, a measuring device in their office, except yeah. they do patient cups, the little drinks. That's exactly cups. what I ended up using. Yeah. So I tell them, you know, fill one of those up with just regular bleach. And, and it's really important too, to just point out that it's got to be just regular household bleach, not like the scented kind yes. or they have like a spill resistant. Don't want to use that. It has extra ingredients in it and it can cause some soapiness. And so we don't want that. Okay. Uh, regular household bleach and just fill one of those up with the uh, bleach and then nine cups of regular tap water. And you can mix that all together and that'll be your perfect dilution. That's exactly what I did. So then I think I ended up putting too much in the actual water bottle because then I, I poured it. But really, you just need enough for it to run through the lines mm -hmm. until you smell the bleach. And then, yep. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that gets a little confusing to people. Like, oh, how do I, so I, do I run the lines for the whole 10 minutes or do I? And so it's, it's no, you're going to want to um, just run it until you smell the bleach, like you said, and then let it sit for, for 10 minutes. So one tip I will give you is when that happens to me too, once I smell it, it's all I smell. And so I'll, you can use like a hot pink post-it note or a fluorescent colored Ooh. piece of paper, put it under the stream and it'll start to bleach it right away. You'll know that it's, that bleach is in the lines. Yeah, that's you can, also, I was curious about the rinsing part of it. So once I was done 10 minutes, mm -hmm. I dumped the rest of the bleach and then um, can I fill it up with regular tap water or do I need to use distilled water? So we recommend tap water and we actually say start with warm water. Um, so warm water will kind of help push, not only will it push the bleach out, but uh, it'll help grab any biofilm that might be stuck to the sides of the lines. The warm mm. water will push that out. So we say start with warm water, flush for a good two minutes or so, and then flush cold water through. And it can be tap water um, as well. It says we're, you're just going to flush it through. And you don't want to flush it into your evacuation lines. That's another, you yes. don't want to make sure you flush into a, cup, bucket, or sink. I would always err on the side of caution, flush a little bit more than rather than just, I don't think a minute is quite enough. I think I would go two to three minutes for flushing. So, yeah. uh, kept joking that I was like, uh, if you're going to run water lines, go to the bathroom before. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> for sure. Um, uh, and I'm curious. So for me, now we're in the shutdown, of course, I'm not seeing patients anytime soon in my practice. And so I went ahead and purged the lines again. Was that correct? Yeah. Yeah. If you're, you know, if we're still in that, some people are still in that uncertainty of we're not, no, we don't know when we're going to open again. Uh, so we're saying if you're, if, if it's, if you're not sure, go ahead and just purge them again. You may want to go ahead and shock one more time when you go back in. Okay. Um, you know, we're in a very interesting time right now. And I was like, yeah. okay, it's this, what would my normal look like? So that sure. answered my questions. And then I, oh, yeah. um, when I get back, I'm going to shock and then test and yes. then put the blue tabs in my water, right? You got it. Yep. And then you don't have to purge your lines on overnight or even over the weekend. Uh, you can leave that blue tab in as long as you're, you're seeing patients and your it, blue tab stays working and keeping those lines clean after you shock. So it'll maintain those lines for up to 28 days. It'll stay, stay working. So really good product. Um, Very good. Well, thank yeah. you for all this yeah. information. Thank you for all you guys are doing over there at ProEdge to help us get safe dental water lines for our patient care um, and prevent any other issues that we might right. have uh, yeah. around this time. <laughs> thank you. Well, thanks for hanging out with me. Don't forget to check out ProEdgeDental.com. Obviously, their customer service is amazing. And they have so many resources, things to download, uh, videos to watch, and continue to follow me along my journey. So stay tuned, and thanks again to ProEdge Dental.